Okay, guys, so we're going to talk about acid-base theory today. We're going to be looking at two of the theories, Arrhenius theory and Bronsted-Lowry theory. And so first we'll look at the Arrhenius acid. Uh, the definition of an Arrhenius acid is substance that releases a hydrogen ion in solution. And so some examples of this would be HCl and HNO3, hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. When you put these into water, they will dissolve, and one of the things that will be released or ionized will be a hydrogen ion. Uh, and so those are Arrhenius acids. An Arrhenius base is a substance that releases hydroxide ions in solution. So some examples of Arrhenius bases would be sodium hydroxide, uh, calcium hydroxide as well. When these uh, substances dissolve the OH, will be released, in this case we would get two OHs, would be released into the solution. So those are Arrhenius acids and Arrhenius bases. They're really, really simple. They're the most basic definition of acids and bases. They encompass a lot of acids and bases, but not all of them. Um, really, for this kind of a, you know, for this theory, you just need to know the definition of an Arrhenius acid and an Arrhenius base, and then be able to pick out an Arrhenius acid or base from a list. And so what you're looking for in a list of compounds is look for that something you know, H, that's your acid, plus the rest of the compound. And in chemistry, we can put an A there for acid. For Arrhenius bases, look for uh, an OH at the end of a compound, some other compound here, OH, and that's going to be dissolved out um, as it is thrown into water. So those are your Arrhenius acids and Arrhenius bases. The problem with Arrhenius acids and Arrhenius bases is that there were bases that were known to be bases that did not uh, subscribe to the theory of an Arrhenius acid or an Arrhenius base. So, for example, one of those substances would be uh, ammonia. If ammonia was placed into water, um, plus water, then what you got was a base. And the problem here is that the ammonia compound does not have any OH to release. And so how does this compound make the solution basic? And so the Arrhenius acid definition did not cover all bases and acids, and so um, it was an incomplete definition, if you will. A couple of chemists, uh, Bronsted and Lowry, got together, and they kind of figured out a new definition of acids and bases, which um, didn't dispute uh, any Arrhenius acids and bases. They would still qualify, um, but uh, it would also incorporate some new acids and bases that uh, didn't fit the Arrhenius definition. And so we got a couple of new definitions here. And in this definition, a Bronsted-Lowry acid, I'm just going to abbreviate BL for Bronsted-Lowry. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is a substance that uh, is a hydrogen ion donor. It donates hydrogen ions. And so we can go back to our uh, HCl example. That's a, an Arrhenius acid because it, it dissociates that hydrogen off. But in our Bronsted-Lowry theory, uh, what happens is when you put that HCl into water, the H actually gets donated to the water, and what we end up with is a Cl plus an H3O plus. And this particular ion here, we haven't talked about it yet, is called a hydronium ion. And this is what you actually have in an acid-base solution. You don't have free H's floating around in water. They'll find themselves a water molecule, and they'll attach themselves to it and form this H3O plus. And so in this case, this hydrogen, is, this HCl, which would be an Arrhenius acid because it dissociates to release hydrogens, is also a Bronsted-Lowry acid because it donates the hydrogen to water. One thing about the definitions is that you don't have, um, something does not change from an acid to a base just because you change the definition. If it's an Arrhenius acid, it's also going to be a Bronsted-Lowry acid. It would also be a Lewis acid, although we're not going to talk about Lewis acids. Um, an acid is an acid is an acid, no matter what the definition uh, we're going by is. Um, and so that's a Bronsted-Lowry acid, something that's, that uh, donates hydrogen ions. And that leads us to the Bronsted-Lowry uh, base, which is a substance that accepts hydrogen ions. So it does the opposite. It's accepting a hydrogen ion. And that helps us solve the problem of the ammonia molecule that uh, is a base. So let's take a look at what's happening with ammonia. Uh, when you put ammonia into water, um, what will happen is you'll actually get a hydrogen move from the water to the ammonia. And so the 
NH3 is, it, is actually going to accept a hydrogen ion. And when it accepts that hydrogen ion, remember it's a hydrogen ion that moves, so it carries that charge with it. When it accepts that hydrogen ion, it becomes positive, and we add a hydrogen to it. So the NH3 becomes NH4 with a positive charge. Now, when water, which we can also write, if you remember, water can be written as HOH, when we donate that hydrogen over, what remains behind and water? What remains behind is OH, which we know to be our base particle. And so this is how ammonia is a base. It's a base not because it releases an OH, but because the fact that it accepts a hydrogen, that produces an OH from the water that from the remainder of the water. And so we get um, an OH base particle. And so our solution is basic. And so this is a Bronsted Lowry base. Now Let's take a look at a couple of um, Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions. All right, so here are a couple of reactions. We have um, hydrochloric acid reacting with water to produce the hydronium ion plus chlorine, chloride ions. And we have the one we just did, the ammonia plus water producing the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. So let's, let's label our Bronsted-Lowry acid and our Bronsted-Lowry base. And so what is the HCl doing in this reaction? Well, as it goes from the left side to the right side, the H is gone. Therefore, uh, what happened is the H got transferred to the water. It donated, donated. And so if it donated, that makes the HCl the Bronsted-Lowry acid. Now, if the HCl donated the hydrogen, well, what did the water do? It accepted the hydrogen, and uh, the, the water accepting the hydrogen makes it a Bronsted-Lowry base. And this is one thing about Bronsted-Lowry definitions. You always have both present. If something's going to donate, something else is going to accept that hydrogen. And so you always have a Bronsted-Lowry acid combined with a Bronsted-Lowry base uh, in that definition. Now, let's look at the uh, ammonia molecule down here. And so what is ammonia doing to go from NH3 to become an NH4 positive? What did it do? Well, it had to bring in a hydrogen um, ion. And so that hydrogen came from the water. <clears throat> and so if it's accepting, that makes it the acceptor, then uh, ammonia is the Bronsted-Lowry base. And in this case, water, since it is uh, donating, well, the donator is the Bronsted-Lowry acid. And that brings up a very, very important thing about Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases in water. If you look right here, water is a Bronsted-Lowry base. Uh, if you look right here, water is a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Water acts as both a base and an acid. Uh, and there's a special definition for substances that do that. And that substance, that definition is amphoteric. And amphoteric is any substance that can act both as an acid and a base. And what you need to know is that water is amphoteric. You need to know that. Water is amphoteric. There's some more information that we need to know about these Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions here. Um, is the fact that the other side of the equation um, also has a Bronsted-Lowry acid and base because these reactions can actually go in the reverse direction as well. They don't have to go forward. They can go backwards as well. And if they go backwards, if we're going from the right side to the left side, what is the H3O doing as it becomes H2O? Well, it's giving the H back to the Cl. And if it's donating or giving, then that makes the H3O an acid. And since the Cl is taking that hydrogen to become HCl, that makes the Cl a base. Now, we don't label these Bronsted-Lowry acids or Bronsted-Lowry bases just for the sake of confusion. We don't, we don't want to be confused. Um, the Bronsted-Lowry is on the left side of the equation. On the right side, we're going to call these conjugates. So these are the conjugate acid and bases. A little bit sloppy there. Sorry about that. So H3O is the conjugate acid. Cl is the conjugate base. And it's... Uh, 
it's just basically the flip of the reaction, moving the reaction the other direction. Um, if you look down here on this particular reaction, we also have a conjugate acid base. Uh, the NH4, as it goes left to right, uh, right to left, sorry, would be giving the H back to the OH, so it's donating, and so the NH4 would be the conjugate, I'm just going to abbreviate here, the conjugate acid, and the OH accepting that hydrogen would be the conjugate base. There are several ways to figure out conjugate acids, conjugate bases. One way is just to look at the reaction in the reverse direction like we just did. Uh, the other way is to find the partners, if you will. And so um, I'm going to use our white pen here. It's not going to show up very well. It's good enough, though. NH3, what is its partner on the right side? Well, the thing that it became is its partner, uh, which is NH4. Well, on the left side, it's the bronsted lowry base. It will be the opposite thing on the right side. So if it was the base on the left, it will be the acid on the right. Uh, so that's one easy way to figure out um, what it's going to be. And so the water was the acid on the left. It will be the base on the right. And these are called uh, conjugate, um, or these are called acid-base pairs, if you will. Conjugate acid-base pairs. Acid-base pairs. Uh, because they go together. So we always have a base combined with an acid, a bronsted lowry base with an acid, and a bronsted lowry acid with a conjugate base. And so they're, those, that's what they're called, acid-base pairs. So that's the theory that we're going to talk about. You need to be able to identify and label bronsted lowry acids and bases, conjugate acids and bases, know what amphoteric is, be able to pick out an Arrhenius acid, Arrhenius base from a list of molecules. That should be pretty easy because you're just looking for that leading hydrogen or that uh, OH at the end of the compound that can be released. Okay, so that's all for this one.